But what this research tells us is that we now have a theory and some evidence for how policymakers can improve transitions for English language learners. However, there are many questions that are still unanswered. The first question is, should policymakers establish one or many thresholds? Or another way of thinking about that is, is there evidence of threshold effect heterogeneity? Now, my colleagues Karen Thompson and Martha Mikowski and I have examined uh, this particular question in a paper that's coming out soon in the American Educational Research Journal. Now I'm going to tell you more about the study that we conducted. We examined the effects of reclassification in two different states. This is important because sometimes the policies for reclassification are set at the state level and sometimes they're set at the district level. The new Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, suggests that reclassification policies need to be standardized, or at least the reclassification um, process needs to be standardized across districts within a state. It could be interpreted that such a standardization process requires that the criteria are also standardized. We're not certain yet, we'll have to see how this plays out in the law, but there's potential for this. In such a case, what that would mean is that if the criteria are interpreted to be standardized, then we would have the criteria set at the state level, and then that would affect all the districts. Well, sometimes this happens already in a couple in, in states across the country. So what we're going to do in this paper is we're going to look at states where we have situations like that, where there are the criteria set at the state level, and then the districts have to follow that. And we're going to see if there are effects at the state level, and then also effects that vary across the districts. So we did this in one state, um, state A. I won't really be talking about state A because there were multiple different pathways of reclassification um, <clears throat> that students could have sat satisfied that were set at the state level. Um, it's a more complicated situation, so, and we didn't have complete data on those students, so I'm going to skip over state A and focus more on state B. So in state B, there was one threshold on an English language proficiency, or ELP, assessment. <clears throat> there were over 100 school districts in this state, and all the districts had to adhere to that one particular um, threshold that was set uh, at each grade level for um, English language proficiency uh, attainment for the students in their district. So what we're going to do here is we're going to combine meta-analysis techniques with regression discontinuity and instrumental variable techniques. Those were the techniques, the RD and IV, that I talked about in the previous paper. We're now going to combine that with meta-analysis. And what that does is it allows us to run a regression discontinuity design where we can compare students just below and just above the threshold in each individual district. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take all those individual district estimates and then aggregate them up and see what the average is um, at the state level. So this allows us to estimate statewide average effects, and it also allows us to examine between district variability in the effects of reclassification. So what this tells us is that the state's uniform reclassification criteria appear to be implemented to strikingly different degrees across the state. So now what we want to do is say, what are the effects of reclassification on graduation? This is a somewhat complicated graphic, but I'm going to walk through it um, so that we can see the individual components. <clears throat> what we have here are the effects of reclassification on graduation likelihood for each of the individual districts um, in our analyses. And then we also have the state average. That's at the bottom here. And what we see down at the bottom is that, on average, we see that reclassification at that threshold doesn't actually have an effect on uh, graduation on average. So if we go back to the theory that I posited before about how we would think about smooth transitions versus disruptive transitions, this is suggesting that this is a smooth transition overall in the state. And that would suggest that the state criteria are actually fine for reclassification on average. However, we see that there is considerable heterogeneity. This is the p-value on the estimate of there being no heterogeneity. And since the p-value is very small, it suggests that there is substantial heterogeneity, which you can see this too in the graphic, where we see that there are some districts, such as these districts, where it's better to remain an English learner, and then there's other districts where it's better to exit English learner status. Robert Linquanti and Gary Cook have provided numerous reasons why 
we actually want to have common criteria and how that might be beneficial, such as if a student is to transition from one school district to another school district, we wouldn't want those two districts to treat the same student differently and for that student to be reclassif reclassified in one district and to remain an English learner in another district. We want continuity for students that are moving across, uh, across districts. Additionally, we also want to be able to compare uh, districts and to learn from different districts so we could see if something's working in one particular setting, then maybe that might also work in another setting. So the more comparable things are, the more we can learn as researchers and as policymakers from uh, these comparable settings. So there's many reasons why we might want to have uh, standardization in the reclassification criteria. But when we have these particular types of analyses that reveal that there might be negative effects in some situations, then we need to think, what is it that we could do? So we might think we could provide additional tailored supports to certain students who might be struggling, uh, given the particular criteria in their district and in the state. And then we also might think, well, we can provide tailored supports to districts where it seems that there are a disproportionate number of students who are struggling. So then the nat natural next question is, what explains the variation in the effects across the different districts? Well, this is actually something that we're exploring right now, and we're exploring it through more qualitative methods. So I want to recap what the policy implications were from before this last study. Those were that reclassification can have effects. Sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative, sometimes they're null, and it depends on the context. Policymakers can correct misaligned policies, and it's important to consider um, that we need to have alignment between the assessment thresholds and also uh, the services that we provide to students. The new implications from this most recent study uh, are that even when we have the same threshold, we can have very different effects of reclassification on student outcomes, including graduation. So future work really needs to consider heterogeneity of effects and where we might see positive effects and where we might see negative effects and why they might uh, result. If states uh, decide to go in the direction of standardizing the criteria uh, across districts, then we need to consider how we could evaluate these particular policies using techniques like those that I was describing today. And we also need to think about how we could consider realigning services and settings to provide smoother transitions for students. Research-wise, the research really needs to go in the direction of taking the types of methods that we're using here, such as regression discontinuity designs that give us um, strong causal warrant, um, with methods that are more qualitative in nature that allow us to dig deep to understand what, it, what might be going on in particular uh, school settings and for particular students that would really help us understand the nature of why students might be struggling or might be succeeding under various policies. So we need to have a mixed methods approach going forward that combines these quasi-experimental techniques such as regression discontinuity with more nuanced, in-depth, qualitative methods. And finally, we need to consider that we're entering a new era. And this is the era of the Every Student Succeeds Act. And we need to think about what evaluations such as the one that I was presenting here today, and also um, <clears throat> what results such as the ones presented today where we see heterogeneity of effects across different districts might mean when we think about standardization of the reclassification process and standardization of reclassification criteria.